Thanks for joining me today. I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the new convenient color selection features in Corel Painter 2020. Color selection has been improved throughout Painter. For example, dialogues that deal with choosing color, such as the paint buckets fill with current color, now show the universal color wheel, which is a color picker that is synchronized across Painter. So this color wheel that I get when I'm selecting the current color for the fill is the same color wheel that I'll get when I'm just choosing general color here in Painter. And if I switch to a shape tool and I select a fill for that, I get the same color picker. This color picker has the color wheel, it has color sliders, and it shows you your color swatches. I'm gonna go ahead and put down some light blue paint here. And I want you to look on the main color swatch here in the color picker. I'm gonna change my color to a different color and you can see that swatch is now split in half. So I can see my previous color next to my current color. So if I wanted a blue that's just a tiny bit darker, I could choose that. And now when I put that down, I get a nice comparison before I even start painting. If I wanted to make that color maybe a little bit more indigo, I could change it just a bit. And that's a great way to pick color. Now you probably can't help but notice that the sliders for color are now in color. So for example, this is the red slider and I can add less or more red to my color. I can do the same with green and blue. Now I personally do not like RGB for picking color. I prefer to change this to display as HSV. Now I can view my color as hue, saturation, and value. So I can control the hue or the pure color, which is on the ring here. I can control the saturation, which is the horizontal axis, making the color desaturated or more saturated. And I can control the value on the vertical axis here with the V slider. And I can see those colors update on the fly. So I can very easily make tweaks to my color. I can even hold control or command on my keyboard and I can move this in very small, very fine increments. You can also expand this horizontally so I can stretch these sliders out to make them wider. And you can customize the color panel to show more or less content and be more compact. So for example, I can right click on the color panel, I can hide the color wheel, I can hide the color swatches, I can hide the clone color button, and now all I'm left with are the color sliders. So you could have something like this to choose color which takes up a lot less space. Let's go ahead and go to the window menu. Let's look under color panels. And you can see that right now we're using the full view color panel, but there's also a new compact mode, which gives you something very similar. And if you prefer, you can work with color this way. But you can also press Control Alt 1 to bring up the temporal color panel. And this has been updated as well. You'll notice that there's a new menu up in the top right. And if we click on that menu, we can choose to make this pinned or unpinned. If it's pinned, it's going to stay visible on the screen at all times. If it's unpinned, then when you click on the screen and paint, it goes away. If you want to bring it back, you can use your keyboard shortcut of Control alt one to bring it back. If we go back to that menu, you can also turn clone color on and off. You can swap the colors, swapping between main and additional color. And you can switch it to left-handed mode, which shows this color swatch on the other side. That way left-handed people aren't covering up their color swatch when they're choosing a color. Another thing you might notice is this new harmonies panel. We'll go ahead and select this bluish color and you can see that the harmonies panel updates to show me color harmonies. These are colors that are complementary to your currently selected color. There are six different modes which we can access up here in the top right sub dialog. Right now we're showing complementary, but we could also show analogous, split complementary, tetradic, monochromatic light, and monochromatic dark. So the way this works is you wanna choose your primary color. This is the color that all of the harmonies will be based off of. So let's say it's gonna be this blue color here. And then you have these lock icons. Now these lock icons are gonna make it so that if you choose a color in your harmony, it's not gonna change your primary color. And I'll show you what I mean. I'll go ahead and lock this harmony here. I'll paint a test stroke. I'll select this aqua color on the end. And you can see that because I locked this one, this one didn't change. The other ones changed their primary color to that aqua color. So now if I paint and I switch between all these different harmonies, this top option is not changing. And most of the time that's gonna be what you want it to do if you're experimenting with these different colors. So this lock is very important. If I go ahead and I sample that original base color again, and I lock these remaining harmonies, now I can pick the colors from within those harmonies without the primary or the target color changing. As soon as I unlock that layer, it's going to designate the currently selected color as the primary color for the harmony. Now, if you wanna be able to save these color harmony swatches for later, you can click the next icon, which adds them to a color set. You can give it a name, I'll just call it analogous harmonies. Now, if I look in my color set libraries, 
I can see my analogous harmonies are now saved here permanently as swatches. So there you go, those are the convenient color selection improvements in Corel Painter 2020. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to check out some of my other demonstrations of Painter 2020's top features. Thank you.